Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the informational session that the Department of Education is providing this afternoon about the AIMS, AIMS Steps to Literacy module project. We are very excited to be able to have this opportunity to share with you this wonderful professional learning resource and um, how we hope that you will be able to take advantage of this in the coming summer and across the next school year. I'm gonna start by just doing a couple of introductions. For those of you who I might not have met previously, I'm Leanne Larson. I'm the Director of Early Learning in Maine's Department of Education. And I'm joined this afternoon by a colleague, Dee Saucier. And Dee, I'm gonna ask you if you could introduce yourself too. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dee Saucier and I am the uh, Inclusive Education Literacy Specialist and Dyslexia Coordinator in the Office of Special Services and Inclusive Education. Welcome. Thanks, Dee. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping details. Once again, if you could keep your lines muted, that would be terrific because we are recording. There are a number of folks who are unable to attend this afternoon, but would like to be able to review the recording. And for those of you who are attending, but have maybe wondering when it will become available, we'll do our best to try to get this posted in the next day or so. It normally takes us at least 24 hours to turn recordings around, but we'll get it up as quickly as we can. We will provide time this afternoon for questions amongst um, the information yeah. that we're going to be sharing with you. Um, oh. I just got a message. <laughs> we'll try not to do that again. <laughs> um, we um, will provide opportunity for folks to ask questions this afternoon. You can certainly put questions at any point into the chat box, depending on whether it's myself or Dee who is speaking, the other one will be monitoring and can try to respond um, either in chat or um, we'll jump in and, and respond. We will also provide time at the end for you to come off of mute to ask a question if that's easier. So we always like to start our sessions in um, the Department of Education by making sure that everyone is well aware of the department's mission and vision statements, um, as well as our strategic goals. And I know you're all able to read the content that's on the screen. What I want to say though on the front end is that the particular opportunity that we're talking about this afternoon is probably best connected to developing, supporting and sustaining a robust educator workforce and promoting the education excellence and equity for all mean learners. Um, literacy, as I think many of you would agree, is really um, an issue of equity and one that we take very seriously and we work very hard to support educators in our state and making sure that their students all become as literate as possible. So this opportunity is really around building your capacity um, as an educator to stay current in your practice and um, we're excited to be able to offer it to you. So this afternoon, we're gonna spend some time talking about the professional development opportunity that these literacy modules hold for the field. And then we're going to spend some time talking about how you go about actually being able to access this resource, as well as um, the ability to earn a stipend for completing um, modules if you do that by a particular date, which you will see on the screen um, is that they must be completed prior to August 24th in order to be eligible for that stipend. All right, so before we dive into the actual um, form and function of these modules, which Dee is gonna talk about in just a bit, we did wanna give a little bit of background about what's led us to securing this professional learning resource for the field. Um, I think that, you know, probably many people on this call this afternoon would agree that in um, the last 10 to 15 years, we have learned a tremendous amount about 
how the human brain works and the way in which um, we as educators, the kinds of instruction that we're providing can have a really powerful impact on children's brain development. And that's certainly the case across many, many disciplines and definitely in respect to literacy development for our youngsters. Um, several years ago, our um, education committee in the state charged the department with conducting a study of beginning reading and literacy in Maine. And one of the things that they were really interested in better understanding was what was making a difference for um, literacy achievement amongst some of our students in the state and what were schools finding um, was either working particularly well to promote that literacy achievement or was really lacking in um, their schools that they felt like they could use more of. And so what we heard consistently in the um, study that we conducted through teacher surveys, through school surveys, through um, focus groups with particular schools was that when educators had really timely and high quality professional learning provided um, that was in line with what we know about brain development, they were able to do a better job of meeting the needs of their students. And what we heard also from many schools and educators was that sometimes being able to access that professional learning in a relatively easy way um, and in a way that wasn't um, cost prohibitive was a barrier that they were facing. And so when we shared those results with the um, education committee, it really got both the department and um, legislators really thinking about what else could we be doing to support our educators in Maine in this area. And so earlier um, this year, you saw a literacy grant become available through, uh, that was funded through um, some of our relief funding. Um, but at the same time that we were gearing up for that, our department was also doing a lot of work looking for some high quality professional learning resources that could be made available to the field. And we, at the same time that we've been receiving uh, relief funding, we are also the recipient in Maine of a fairly sizable preschool development grant. And one of the needs that had also been captured for the needs assessment for that grant was around um, improving literacy instruction. So that particular grant is one of the strong funding sources for the resource that we're gonna be sharing with you this afternoon. It's also being paired with some of our remaining relief funding to support the stipends that are going to be available. Originally, we had hoped to be able to use the learning management system that the state is beginning to develop to help support this work but it's just not moving quite fast enough. So in the end, we decided to research um, other professional learning that is already available for us to tap into and try to select something that would meet the needs of educators. Um, we collected a lot of educator feedback to help us make this decision. And um, we're very excited about the opportunity that it holds for the field. So um, before I go into the module overview, the other um, partner that we, the other um, contributing uh, partner that we did um, was the Office of Special Services and Inclusive Education as an extended part of our mission to um, think about quality tier one instruction as a preventative measure because, and part of our state dyslexia plan. So you'll see as we go over the overview, where some of those pieces also um, fit in. So when we think about how the modules work, um, Leanne gave you the background of how that happened, but so we had a lot of input from a lot of different partner groups and there were really some important things that were, that were brought out by those groups that they really felt uh, were critical for us to consider. So we, they wanted to make sure that the modules were engaging and that people had an interest and in that they weren't just two hours or three hours of, you know, mm -hmm. just sit in front of videos. They're very, they have, a, they're written in a way and developed in a way they have a learn, a practice apply. So there are Sorry, teaching, te to this teaching techniques. And if we could just remind everybody again to mute themselves, please. Thanks. 
Um, and so there are a variety of teaching techniques. There's videos. Some have the early learning has some printable resources from ARI. There are a combination of videos. Videos are average between five and seven minutes in length. There are some, um, there are certainly some printables and just a variety, some articles that you can print and some usable resources. But we did want, the other thing we wanted to make sure of, because we do have such you know limited access to the funding for this, is we wanted to make sure that it was just available to Maine educators. So the whole, all the modules are available online and AIM will, it's an external digital platform and AIM will track all of your progress. So if you leave the module and you come back, it will pick up right where you left. It'll show the present, uh, present complete and it will be there. Each module does start with a pre, kind of a pre-survey to show your knowledge and then a post-survey at the end. There are check-ins along the way, but there's also a post-survey at the end that shows um, so you can see what, you know, what you've learned in addition to what you already knew for this course. The contact hours and certificate for completion will come from AIM from the platform as well. The modules have a varied time commitment, so you'll see that a little bit. And even though the stipend is only available until before modules completed before August 24th, there is, if you sign up for the course and you get your access code, say, on Monday, the, the access to that course will be available until that date in 2025. So there's 12 months worth of access. And so you can keep, so even once you've completed a course, you can still go back and look at the information. You can revisit parts of it. Uh, and so you can, you'll have access to all that material for a full year. From our end though, you do only have access to one course at a time. We bought a certain number of licenses. And so um, those, those, licenses are, are just one person at a time and you'll one person gets one mo module at a time. So when that one is complete, AIM will let us know that your post survey is done and they've awarded your certificate and then you'll be eligible to register again for another course. So what that looks like is, um, it, and we're gonna get into that in the registration section, but what the modules look like and you can see and these are available on the website, which we will share with you as well. But what these look like, uh, they range from about 11 hours to seven, um, excuse me, to four. And so you can see that there are a variety of modules. They're really based on evidence and the research that um, the AIM um, Institute for Research has done extensively. And they're really kind of these key components to the science of reading, phonological awareness, decoding, spelling, vocabulary. Um, language comprehension and written expression. We know there's a lot of reciprocity between those two at tasks. So there's one there. Uh, there's a shorter module available that's specific to the kind of myths and facts about dyslexia. The uh, Growing Proficient Readers from Dr. Airy is a shorter module. It's really geared more towards a early practitioner from kind of pre-K through grade kindergarten and first grade. That one does come with some printables and some usable classroom activities. And then the last one is a 10 hour module. And that one is kind of a bundle. It's a get, it's a kind of a, a package of a couple of different pieces that was developed by um, Dr. Elsa Cardenas Hagen about multilingual learners. And so that one um, it is comprised of, of multiple sections, but they all, if you sign up for that one, they all will be together. Uh, and so as part of this, there are some kind of some key pieces that we've outlined once you consider what it is that you want to do. The first thing, and this has been the most questions that I've had in the past couple of days since the news release, um, the first thing you have to do is if you're interested in that stipend piece, which is only available till, until midnight on August 23rd, is that you need a vendor code. And that is a unique ID that is, allows you to be paid through the state. I know that I've had some people who have submitted their social security number um, and, and that you need that to get a vendor code, but that is not the same number. And um, also there is, um, there, some people have submitted their school vendor code and that one um, is, is, that would give your, all our schools have a vendor code, but that would, that would mean when you got to the end and you showed it was done that the, the money for that you earned for your stipend would go to the school 
and they may or may not know that it belongs to you. So you're really going to want to complete the vendor ID system, and we're going to walk through that um, so that you can, actually Leanne's going to walk through that, um, but so that you have an idea of what that, um, that you are specific, that is specific to you. This next thing you're going to do is complete the form, which a number of people have, um, because this, we will um, make sure that we have the vetting process for that, that people can complete only one module at a time, or have access to only one module at a time. We're checking to make sure that it's a school main school email address. Um, you know, there are lots of folks who would really benefit from this information, but, you know, we, uh, you know, students, pre-service teachers, and a lot of folks, but right now we really want to focus on people who are currently employed in a main school system, and that does include ed techs, special ed teachers, um, but it is people who are currently employed in a in a main school system. Once we've approved, you've, you've submitted the form, and once you've been approved, you'll get, some of you might have got an email from me today that just confirms, is this really you? Did you really want to sign up for this module? And people have replied to that. And if there were any things that were incomplete, I asked that, and then you will have about a three to five day window to get your access code. That should be less as we move forward, uh, but the person who is uh, sending out the access codes right now is on vacation in Hawaii. So um, she thought we would be done with this by now. But she's a little bit, so lucky her, she's in Hawaii. And then after your module is completed, we will get a notification from AIM that says this person is completed with their post survey and is finished. And you can also let us know, but then you'll be ready to sign up for the next module. So some kind of some important pages and while Leanne is going over the registration, I can add these to the chat, but there are a couple of pages. These are also available in the news release that most of you probably read in order to sign up for this session. But we do have our main uh, Department of Education landing page and all of the module information is there. You can come back to that if you need to find the registration link or anything again. And that, and then we also, once these go forward, you can see that there, there are, you know, it's not live yet. This will be where this person, you know, where we will have be able to enter those uh, because like I said, she is still out, but this will be, those are, these are kind of two important pages that you're, you'll be able to come back to the whole uh, year that you have access to the modules. And then just some important user information and we will share the slide deck and the live links with the recording. But again, these are just kind of important kind of tips. One module at a time, I need a school, uh, school email. Generally, the registrations will be reviewed on the form within 48 hours. I, I am reviewing them. I do have a couple of times where I'm away from my computer for a, oh, lost my computer, there it is. Um, from my computer for a little bit longer than that, and I will try to get to them as soon as I can. Um, AIM does all the tracking of the progress on your module. We don't, it's an external um, LMS, so we don't have any contact with that. So if there's a technical problem with the way the module is not working or something, AIM will be the person and you'll have information from them about how to do that. You will have access for one year from the start date you can tell us that you've completed a module and AIM will also send us that that information so that we have information and collect the data on how many modules we bought a certain number of licenses so we'll be able to track how many modules have been module licenses have been used um then um there is a way that you can select okay, i go back for just a second um back to the screen you can earn micro credentials for from AIM so for example, a micro-credential might be modules one, two, and three, and that's a micro-credential about the science of reading. And I believe there, I think it's about $50 and AIM will award that to you. So if you complete those and those are on that AIM page where you can see how they can be bundled, those micro-credentials are not something that we provide payment for. So if you do the modules that are part of the micro-credential, um, then the, the fee for you getting that micro-credential, and I think you can put it in your signature line and you can do things with it, but that part of that is at your own expense. You're welcome to do it and you'll have the certificates to show that you completed it, but that additional cost, I, I, which I, like I said, I think it's about $50. Uh, they also have an option to get, to get credit for it, like 
college credit through a partnership that they have. And again, though that fee is also uh, at your own expense. So any of those other things that AIM offers will be available to you, but those are outside our contract with AIM. And again, if you, the, you will only be, even if you sign up for a module at 11 o'clock on the 23rd of August, it, it's not just if you sign up for the module, they're actually module work that has been completed prior to that time. And the reimbursement schedule, there is no timesheet or, or any of those things. Um, this is the reimbursement schedule for a module. If you, these are the hours that aim a lot to the modules. So if you complete module one in eight and a half hours, then you're very efficient. But if it takes you 10 hours, that is still the payment. Um, we base the payment on $25 an hour for the time that AIM indicated that it would take you to complete it. Uh, so this is the reimbursement schedule for each of the modules. And that will be what, you know, when a module is completed, that will be how we um, determined your stipend. And so now we'll get into the vendor code part where there have been a lot of questions and Leanne has got it. <laughs> I do, Dee, but I'm gonna ask you first, if you wouldn't mind to just take us back um, a few slides to the one which has the steps on it for what you need to do. Because I think it's really important before I dive into the vendor piece that we'll have some steps just in that one step alone to make sure that you that everybody knows what the process is. So the first thing that you have to decide is if you're interested in pursuing completion of one or more of these modules is do I want to earn the stipend associated with it? And if the answer to that is yes, then before you do anything else, you need to complete step number one, which is obtaining a vendor code through the state of Maine. And I'm going to talk about that process in just a minute. But that is um, extremely important because when you go on to step two on this slide, one of the first things you're going to be asked to submit in the registration is your vendor code, if that is something, if you want that stipend. So you don't wanna be going to the registration until you have obtained the vendor code. After you've got your vendor code, you can go to step number two, which is to the Microsoft form, which is that first web link that you see on this slide. And that's where you'll, as Dee said, complete the registration to be able to select the module that you would like to have the license for. That will be received, it'll be reviewed on our end and within a couple of days, um, Dee will reach back out to you with the code that you need. Once you have that code, then you need to proceed to AIM Step to Literacy site because that's where you're going to actually be entering the code that D provides to you. And once you've entered that code into their site, you will have access to that module. And then upon completion, as D talked about, we'll be notified. And if you wanna move on to another module, you'll go back to that same original registration form. But when you complete it this time, you'll still need to put in your vendor code, you'll still put all your information in, but you'll select whatever the next module is that you want to complete. Oh, lost my, wait, come, wait, come back. Oh, there you go. Whew. Right, so Dawn, <laughs> I, I can see your question in the chat, which is if you don't want the stipend, you don't have to get a vendor code. And that would be correct. If you're not interested in earning a stipend, then you can simply proceed with the registration and you can still get access to the um, module that you want to access, but um, you just won't be earning that towards a stipend. Okay. Um, so it won't give you an error code or anything. It will let you beyond that It'll without a vendor code. It will let you move okay. beyond that. Yep, it sure okay. will. It's just that you will, you will get an email from me though that says, are you sure you don't want a vendor code? Just because. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, okay. And you can say, no, I really didn't want a vendor code. Um, It does say that, but um, yeah. yeah. It's fine. And then the other thing to always remember is that we will, will only issue um, access to one module at a time. 
And until you've completed a module, you cannot get access to another module because um, while we have every confidence that people taking advantage of this are gonna complete modules, there may be instances where that doesn't happen and we don't want to give out you know, eight licenses and then only one module ever gets completed because we cannot transfer those licenses to someone else. So we just wanna make sure we maximize the licenses we have. Okay, so um, this list, the order in which you do things is really important to get you from point A to point B to point C. All right, now do we can go back and further on and we'll explain the vendor code piece. So first thing to know is that in order to be paid by the state of Maine for something, you have to have a vendor code. And so that means that if you're interested in the stipend, you're going to have to work through the vendor self-service system in the state in order to access or establish a vendor code. Because it's that code that's going to enable us down the line to be able to say, oh, educator Mary completed three of these modules for this amount of a stipend and please pay that amount to educator Mary. The only way that can happen is if you're established in the vendor system. So the first step is to access the vendor system using the web address that you see on this screen. This web address is also on the landing page on the Department of Ed's website for the uh, AIM Step Into Literacy modules. If along the way you should run into a problem using the website, you should contact the VSS Help Desk. And that number is on the screen in front of you. That is very important. You might want to jot that down so that if something comes up that you get an error message or you can't figure something out, you can call that help desk and they can um, work with you to navigate the system. The other number that you can call is the State of Maine Division of Purchases number. That one, they may not pick up as quickly as the help desk does. So our advice is to use the help desk number should you run into a problem. The other thing that you should be aware of, and we'll point this out as we go through the next few slides, is that there is some very helpful guidance that is posted on the self-service site. And we strongly recommend that you um, click on that guidance and have it at the ready because many of the questions can be answered much more quickly just by using that guidance, okay? The vendor self-serve system is what allows people to establish their vendor code. It's also used a lot by businesses that might be bidding on RFPs in our state. Um, and that's fine, but it, it's also used for individuals. So, Anyone in the state who has a social security number can get registered in this system. And once you've got that vendor code, you're going to want to write that down so that you've got it at the ready when you register for the modules, or even in the future, if you happen to be doing some work for the state, um, having that vendor code is really helpful because you're one step ahead. I just want to check, Leanne, before somebody says they can only see Rebecca on the screen. Do you still see the slides? I see the slides. Yep. Okay. So that must be a viewer setting, I think, for you, Rhonda. I think it might, if you like, look at maybe you just have your viewer mode um, set differently. Okay. All right. So when you um, enter, into the registration system. You're gonna see this particular um, view when you go in. And so there are several different things that could happen on this side. If for some reason you've already 
done the work of setting up your vendor code in the system, so you are what's considered an already registered user, you would use that login information on the left-hand side, where it says login with existing account. But if you've never um, established a vendor code, or if you don't know if you have a vendor code or not, then you're gonna wanna use the button that says register that has the big red circle around it. <laughs> I also want to point out that just below that where you see contacts and forms, right here. in the contact Oops, section, sorry. Let me go back. Yeah. Um, the help desk number is right there for you. There's also an email for the help desk, if that's easier. And in the form section, there are a few forms that are going to be important to know about. One is some directions to using the site. And so downloading that first will save a lot of challenges, potentially. I mean, not that this is not <laughs> difficult to use, but it's just handy to have. Also okay. under that, you can't see it on this slide, there's a link to a W-9 form. And part of this process does ask you to print out the W-9 form, complete it, and mail it back to the state controller's office. What they ultimately want to do is match up what you've entered into the system with what you're mailing to them. So one of the first steps that you're gonna see on a slide coming up is um, that you should make sure that you've got that W-9 form printed out where you can fill it out and then mail it back. You can go through the whole process of setting up your vendor code online and then send in the form. That's kind of the final step at the end. Okay, so once you've clicked that register button, it's gonna bring you to this page and this is an agreement that you're accepting the terms of the use of this site. So you can take the time when you get on the site to read through that. But once you've done, as long as you accept the terms, you will hit the accept terms button in the lower left hand, excuse me, lower right hand corner. And then that will bring you to this page, which has some registration tips and a couple things to notice here. The first set of tips is telling you this is the information that you should have handy when you're ready to fill out your application. You don't have to have a legal business name as an individual. You just need to have your name, your social security number, your contact information. Your procurement address will most likely be your, the same as your home address and your payment address would most likely be the same, wherever you would want to receive the payment. Okay. A number of people have asked me today if, and yesterday if their person, you know, if they, because you had to register on the form, you have to register with a school email, you can use your personal email yes. on this. I know when I completed a vendor form back in the day, I didn't know if I was always gonna be at the same school. Mm -hmm. So I use my personal email to fill out a vendor form yes. ID because that is where, this is part of your payment and this is not, this vendor form is not related to your school email address. That's right. just the registration form. Please feel free to use your home address and your personal email yes. and your personal phone number for this document. That's right. Thank you, Dee. Really good point. Also where it says commodity code for vendors only, that is not something that you need to be concerned with. That's really for businesses. Right under that, it says, whoops, whoops you go back sorry. one second, D. It says, please note, a completed signed form W-9 must be mailed or faxed to the address that is provided below. So just please remember that. Grab that form, fill it out, pop it in the mail, or if you happen to have access to a fax machine, you're welcome to fax it in as well. All right, once you get to this next page, the first thing that the system wants to do is to check to make certain that you don't already have a vendor code because some people might and not even realize it. 
If you've ever done work for the Department of Education and been paid for it in the past, you will probably have a vendor code in the system. So you're going to do a quick check to see whether you have one or not. And the way that you will do that is to use the individual search field. And in there, you will enter your last name and the last four digits of your social security number. And then you'll hit search. If that triggers a vendor code that's already in the system, it's going to pop that up and it's gonna ask if this happens to be you, okay? If it doesn't find anything, then you know you are safe to proceed with your registration to establish a vendor code. And when you hit that new registration, it's going to bring you to this page and this is where you're going to begin to enter your information. You'll also be establishing a password so that in the future, if you want to get back into this site, you will use your username and password to do that. Okay. And there are a number of, I, I'm not, do you want to go through the rest no, of the slides? I was just going to say that there will be some yeah. subsequent steps and, and pages of that application oh, yeah. that you will fill out, but eventually you will hit complete on it. And then you will receive an email back with your vendor code. Then it's your job after that to submit your, the W-9 form um, via mail or fax to the Office of the State Controller. But you'll be able to get all the way to the end of this and have your vendor code established. And so you'll want to grab that vendor code because that's what you're gonna need when you go to register for the modules if you're choosing to have a, um, to complete them and obtain the stipend. You could, Danielle, go back um, and print the form out after the fact, certainly. We just suggest make sure you've got it handy. It's the kind of thing that you can download it and save it to your computer and you'll have it. Yep, and Christine, the address for where to mail the W-9 is right on that um, facing page, but I see Dia's put the slide up <laughs> so that people are able to find it. I'm just looking at the chat to make sure I haven't missed any questions. And I'm just Jennifer, asking if it's taxable. Um, anytime you earn um, $600 or more, then you will get um, a form at tax time indicating that you um, were paid that amount and then that you would need to declare on your taxes. Yes. If, you, if your stipend amount is less than $600, you will not receive a statement from the state. And, and yes, you're registering as an individual. You are registering as an individual. Yep. And Jennifer, you asked, can you sign up for EFT? And yes, you can do that. That is part of, of it. And if you do that, then um, you would receive your payment via electronic transfer instead of a paper copy check that would be mailed to you. So before we stop sharing, just so we can see everybody, if you have questions and you want to come off mute, uh, in the slide deck, you'll also see the contact information. Um, and you'll see that this is just our our regular um, our DOE website, and then the website for these module the module page specifically, and then these are contacts and online information about um, reaching out reaching the department as a whole. Someone asked if we were going to, and I'm going to stop sharing. I have so many screens open. Um, somebody asked if we were going to share the slides, and um, we will we will hopefully be able to post the slides um, with the, the recording. Um, I'm not sure, Leanne, if you're planning on sending them out to the register, the slide deck to the registrants too. If you have, if you email me though, and you miss it and you can't find it, if you email me, I am happy to send you the slides. Yeah, I think what uh, we'll probably email. try to try to do D is just post the slides right online along with the recording. Right. So that it's, it's easy, easy access. Sometimes sending slides, even if we turn them into a PDF, can be a little bit challenging with servers. Right. 
if they already have a vendor code, do they need another a, to do a W-9? They already have their vendor code established, like previously to this. Right. They don't have to do another W-9. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, that as, long as, as long as you have not had any in, of your personal information changed. So for instance, if you have moved since the last time when you applied and were um, provided with that vendor code, you would want to file an update to adjust your um, address because when we issue payments, it's going to go to the address that's associated with your vendor code. And so if anything has changed, make sure you get that updated. You can still use the same vendor code number. It's just, we won't have a way of knowing that your address changed. Um, Taxpayer ID number is your social security number. That's a great question. There was a question about attaching a picture of your W-9. I don't know the answer to that question. People have questions I, about the, the- Oh, sorry. Um, Did my internet draw? Probably. Yeah, some people had questions about the, um, just the processes, of processes about the, in particular, and um, that is um, that guide would have that. It also has the address in it that you would send your vent your V9 to. So that that guide would include all of those yeah. pieces. And I just put the right. link to that guide in there. Yep. Somebody said they couldn't get the form to work, but and I it was working earlier, so I think yep. it's working. Um, I can put it. I can put it in again. Um, as soon as I locate it. Uh, um, once you have your vendor code, that's the link to the registration form again. And it is open to anyone, not just internal. Yeah. Marie, you were asking if we're expecting to have to turn down participants. We're hoping that we don't have to turn down participants. <laughs> Um, we have quite a quite a large number of licenses available. Um, do you probably know the total right off the top of your head better than I do? But of, of licenses, so we have yeah. uh, we have a thousand total licenses, and they are allocated by different modules. We expect that the science of reading module will be the most used, so we have the most licenses in there um, currently. As of two o'clock this afternoon. I had confirmed 44 registrants. Um, so, you know, we've we've got a ways to go before we give full. <laughs> yeah. Um, Amanda, I think the answer to your question will probably be found in that guidebook about how to fill out the location verification page, my business. You, you as an individual, that's probably just going to be the same address a few times because you're you are the vendor. So um, there, the, the recommendation, Marie, is to do module one first, the, the overview of the science of reading, but they can be accessed anywhere. You know, I've had a number of people today that have decided that they want to do the, the module on English learners first. And it is complete in its own right. Some people might feel like you know a lot about the science of reading uh, and you might be interested in Aries phases and the, the early learning module specific to Airy if you're, you know, that might be your interest. So they do not, um, you know, they, they do not, there isn't something that you're going to be unable to access a different module for. Um, that's just their recommendation is to do that module. And so, um, you know, you can, if you want to do the module one and then decide that, you know, the next module of interest to you after the overview is vocabulary, um, then you certainly will be able to do that as well. Uh, and then your first confirmation, Andrea, will be from me. Uh, once I see, once the form, because the form you're filling out first is our internal form to make sure that we have like kind of a vetting process to make sure that, you know, it's a main email and that you, that's really, they, somebody didn't sign you up in your school. We would hate for a bunch of 
you know, that's another fear that some person who is well-meaning in your school thinks, oh, all these teachers should do this. And then you are like, wait, I don't want to spend 10 hours of my summer doing this. And so there is a if, an if email directly to you that says that my records show that you have signed up for this. Is this really what you want to do? Like, um, so there is that. Uh, and so then you'll, then we'll move through and then I will get those licenses out to you or aim will like you'll get a confirmation after that with an access code. Um, oh, that's really nice. <laughs> a lot I of people have been very ready excited. to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just please be patient with us the next few days because, you know, anytime you start a new system, there's bound to be a few little hiccups, but we think it's going to work well. And as Dee mentioned, um, she will be reaching back out to all of you that have registered um, and getting you the codes in the next few days um, as soon as the person at AIM who um, assigns <laughs> all of those can be back and provide it to us. But I don't think she's that, thinking about our codes. And, I don't think she's thinking about our codes in Hawaii right now. <laughs> We, we, it was important to us that we get the informational session in at this point because we know that many of you are finishing up school and we didn't want to risk doing it a little bit later this week and missing some of you. So we thought, let's get it done. And we know that you'll be patient, um, but those codes will be coming. So as you're kicking off your summer vacation, you'll have plenty of time to be able to dive into the, the learning content. Dawn, answer to Jennifer's question. I'd find Jennifer's question. Um, Leanne, the, the EFT asks the department we are working with, would that be the DOE? Uh, is, is that the question you're? Yes, that's a question. I'm not sure. It what says, it said, yeah, it says Jennifer asked it, um, the EFT form asks the department you're working with. Would that be the Department of Education? Yes, that would be fine. Yep. yep. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Leanne, can I ask my question? Sure. Um, so I have a vendor code. Um, however, my vendor code is in my married name and I change back to my maiden name. So do I, you're going to want to update do? that Dawn. Yeah. Get in that, um, yep. profile and update the name. Yep. Yep. Okay. So you can do that online. You should be able to make that update and then okay. you'll also send in um, your W-9 and right on there, there's a box that you can check that indicates that this is an update that you're making so okay. that when they see that they know you already. And, and if you can, if you know your vendor code, you're going to fill that in on the W-9 form. There's a box for that right on there, if you know it, right? And, yeah. and that's, that's another good thing to know. When you establish your vendor code, you should be putting that code right on the W-9 form when you've got it okay. before you submit it, because that's one of the ways that they're able to match things up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Janet, I see your question about the photo. I attached a photo of the W-9 form to the vendor page. That I don't know the answer to if that's an allowable strategy. I'm thinking it may not be because they're, they're pretty clear on the home facing page about printing your, your form and either faxing it or mailing it. So I think to be safe, I'd probably tell you to just go ahead and do that as well. The, so uh, Lydia, you asked if the modules are something you have to pass there. I, I've completed some of the modules. 
And there is a, it's kind of a survey. Um, and the way they're designed, again, is that kind of think and learn and, um, you know, apply module. So even, I, I don't know that pass is the right word, like learn, practice, apply, because the way they're designed is, is kind of like, um, you know, websites that you let your students go on, they will they lift, you know, they'll say, um, uh, you know, it will, it'll kick it back to you and say, you know, rethink this or rewatch this part to get this answer. Um, and so they're, they're not going to, it'll kind of keep you there um, until you've done that. So I wouldn't say that it's a fail, but it's also a, a lift that they're not, they're, well, it doesn't continue until you, you have, um, they've scaffolded that in, that information for you. Um, do we need to complete the W-9 prior to starting the module? Well, you need to obtain a vendor code if you want the stipend and, and you need that before you register if you're going to get the stipend. As far as the W-9, that should be part of the process. You print it out, complete it, and mail it in. You don't have to wait to hear back from the state. As soon as you've got that vendor code, you can go ahead and register for the module and get started with it once we give you the code for um, the license to it. If you don't want the money, you don't when you don't even have to worry about the vendor code piece. You can simply okay. go forward and the registration, it's not going to hold you up. Do you want to skip you, the class? It'll, yeah, it'll say, do you, are you doing that? And it'll say no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the payment, I, yeah. I don't think that the payment will come until after the 24th. Yeah. It, what will happen after the 24th is that we will um, do all of the record keeping and checking with AIM to make sure that everyone who's completed, we've got the record of each person and how many modules they actually completed by that point. And then that will be turned into a manifest that we'll submit for payment. So more than likely it is going to be um, later in September when you it would actually be receiving the stipend because it will take a few weeks on our end to process all of that. And I'm sure it's gonna take a while for the division of finance to do that. Dawn, did you have another question? Whoop, you're on mute. Oh, or do you just have to put your hand down? Okay, <laughs> you're good. All right. I had a couple of questions in there. Uh, it was more just like, it asked me to do the substitute W-9 form. And when I print it, it has all my information on it. <laughs> So I don't know if that is the same thing or if I need to actually go back. It has, it says vendor or customer code. Like it gave me a vendor code when I finished registering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That would be, would be your vendor code, Danielle. Okay. And so then this, sorry, I'm sorry. Like I said, I feel like I'm okay. missing things, but, um, and so then I just would sign this W-9. It has all my address and everything on it, correct? Yes. If, if you printed it out at the end with it all filled in. Yep. yep. That would okay. be fine. Yep. Exactly. Like type of request would be a new entry, I'm assuming? Yes. Yep. All right. Perfect. That's the one thing it didn't do for me. <laughs> okay. That's everything done. Thank yep. you very much. Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. Yeah, you, Nikki, you, if you already have a vendor code, then you, unless you've changed your address or your name, then you don't have to do another one. Right, you can just use the vendor code that you have. Right on time. Anyone else have any other questions? I'm just reading Jordan, um, end up selecting that we want to do module one first. Will it be like we are waiting in line? Well, as soon as you complete module one, Jordan, 
and you've received notification from AIM that you've completed it, then you're welcome to go and register again on our registration page to um, get a code for your next module. You just, we will only issue one license to one educator at a time until they've completed that particular module and then you can ask for another one. And I will update them. I mean, there, like I said, I have a couple of days, I'm not going to Hawaii, but I do have a couple of days where I'm out. And other than those days, I will check them and, and do the process I did today regularly so that people can get them. So it shouldn't be a line. Um, I think I wrote in the slide, maybe up to 48 hours in general, um, but yeah. And then, so it shouldn't be, uh, I know that this is a big influx, but after that, it should be kind of a few at a time and it shouldn't take so long as it's taken the past couple of days. So. Yep. Lydia, um, the modules certainly have opportunity throughout to print particular pieces. Dee had mentioned earlier, um, articles, um, handouts, tools that they might be offering. So along the way, if you have access to a printer, that would be great. The other thing to remember is that you will still have access to the module even after you've completed it for the next year. So um, if you don't have access to a computer this summer, but you do want, to, or excuse me, a printer this summer, but you do want to get back to school, you can always go back in and print things out. Can I ask one more question? At the bottom of my W-9, it says um, it must be submitted along with the application for VSS registration summary form. Any um, idea? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I guess I would say you could either call the help desk, check that guidance document, but normally all you need to do is just submit that form. Okay, I'll call and ask them. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great night. You as well. All right. Well, we are welcome to stay on for another couple of minutes if anyone else has um, additional questions that they'd like to ask or put in the chat. But otherwise, um, we look forward to hearing um, how things are going and um, Hope that you will really enjoy this professional learning resource that's being made available. So Nikki, if you have specific questions about the modules themselves and the process for registering for a module, you're welcome to contact Dee or myself. If it's about the vendor, um, establishing a vendor code, we would strongly suggest that you reach out to the help desk. Um, if after accessing the um, guide to using the um, vendor system doesn't answer your question. Jennifer, I would suggest that if you're getting that error message that you call the help desk. They will, I'm sure, have a list of the error codes and be able to help you troubleshoot that. Yep, Nikki, so my email is where the Zoom would have come through and um, Dee's email is in, is in the informational article that went out from the department. It's also in the, I just put it in the chat too. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. So if you, you, so Julie, you're asking if you can get hours and the stipend. Yeah. You can yes. get contact hours. You will get yep. contact hours and you will get and the stipend. stipend if you, if you do it by midnight on August 23rd. But if you want the micro credential piece, that's the additional cost and you have to work directly with AIM for that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm.
Thanks, everybody.